Hello everyone, this is Dave Corinth, and I'm going to shoot a series of videos um, on how I make my Corinth Toolworks 101. The reason I'm going to do it in series is I don't want to make a long video that's, that's 45 minutes or an hour long, and that's about how long it would take to show you the process in making this from scratch. So I'm going to do it in maybe four or five videos. The first one, which we're going to see today, is casting the body, sand casting it particularly. Um, I made the pattern, and uh, then I had to learn how to make the pattern first, and then I had to learn how to sand cast. It is definitely an art, and I have a newfound respect for pattern makers and those who work at foundries because it is not easy. It is a very difficult thing to do, but it is rewarding. And I have improved my skills considerably, especially with pattern making. And of course, with the casting that I'm at the point now where I can cast two at a time and I'm at about a 90% success rate. When I first started this out, I would be lucky if I got one in four that would work. So I, I've, I've learned a lot. I am by no means an expert foundryman or whatever they're called. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert pattern maker, but I have learned how to do it and I've enjoyed it. It's been a great experience to learn. It gives you a new respect for some of them old tools, especially when you see them now and you see how that was cast and the, the fillets and all that stuff, the drafting. Uh, it's great experience and I encourage you to give it a shot. I mean, it's, it's definitely fun. Um, so for the first video, we're going to cast the body for this. And the next video, we will machine the body and get it ready for uh, the tote and the knob and then for the iron and for the screw cap. So. Let's get started. Two of the most important things to learn when making a pattern to cast a plane is number one, drafting, and number two, fillets. Drafting is where anything that looks like it's a 90, it's really not. It's actually one to two degrees over that. So this side here is probably more like, instead of being 90, it's 91 or 92 degrees. And it's thicker at the base and thinner at the top. That allows you to pull this um, pattern out of the sand once you've packed the sand and you're ready to pour the, the casting. The second is fillets. And fillets, this is a better example of it. This is a, a cast iron, um, ductile iron plane that I'm making. And you can see anywhere these two points would have met here, there's a little, like a little uh, a cove. And that's called a fillet. And that prevents sand from sticking in these corners. If you don't put fillets in there, you can see there's another one there, and they're all along here, all along this edge, all along there and there. So if you don't put those in there, when you pull it from the mold, sand will actually catch right there and prevent you from having a good casting. And I learned this the hard way about 10 times trying to make my first castings. Once I figured the filleting out and drafting, it went a lot smoother. So the bottom part's called the drag with the pattern plate in the middle and the cope placed on top. Talcum powder is used here to prevent the sand from sticking to the pattern. The sand I use is Petrobond. It's sand with clay and oil. For these small castings, it works great. It's very important that you pack this sand tight. The tighter you pack the sand, the better the casting will turn out. And you have to pack it all the way to the top. Once the sand is packed, it's time to skim the top off flat. If you don't skim it off flat, when you flip it over, it can actually break loose. I add some more releasing agent and do the same thing to the other side. Again, it's very important that you pack this sand tight. Ok, 
And again, skimming the top off. This is where I'll actually put in the sprue, the vent holes, and the pouring basin. At this step, the anxiety kind of builds up because you're hoping that it turns out right. And in this case, it did. Very happy with it. Here, I'm just rounding off those sharp 90 degree corners. Anywhere there's a 90, as the molten metal goes through, it can actually form air bubbles. You want everything as smooth as possible when you pour it. Here, I'm cutting the sprue and then adding vent holes. The vent holes allow gases to escape as the molten metal is going in. Now I'm putting in the pouring basin. And then touching it up with my fingers to make sure there's no sharp points. Again, having everything smooth prevents air bubbles from getting in your casting. I then secure the cope to the drag with some screws. For this pour, I'm going to use some rejected brass caps that I poured that didn't make the cut. I clean them first with a wire brush to make sure there's no dirt or debris on them. It takes about 10 minutes for that brass to melt. Once it's melted, I'll pull it out of the furnace and then skim the top off to remove the dross. The dross is impurities that form on top. It's also important you don't breathe those fumes in. I actually have a duct system in my shop to make sure they get vented out. I then put it back in the furnace to let it heat up again. And it's important to pour fast. You don't want to pour and then stop and then pour again. Here I'm removing the coat from the drag. I've let it sit long enough to cool off where I can handle it. But you don't want to touch that metal. It's still very, very hot. I use a dental pick to start picking that sand loose. I want to see if there's any flaws in this one before I go any further. And it's starting to look good. Very happy so far.